mateship, fun goes hand in hand, uh, a wonderful way of life. Um, and that is, you know, what the French call the troisième mi-temps, the third half. You know, it's not just the 80 minutes. Um, it's, it's the before and the after. It's enduring friendships. Um, it's achievements um, in battle where there can be a lot of brutality, but at the end of the game, friendships endure through that. We use that strange word camaraderie. Um, and, and to me that encompasses everything of the mateship, the fun, the experience, the passport to the world. Um, the winning is important, but I think the friendship and that camaraderie is more important. One of rugby's great uh, attractions, I think, as a player is its complexity. Because no two games are exactly the same and it's, you need things to be working, the, the intricacies of the game to be working to get a great game. But in some ways that complexity can also drag, drag it back if the people playing it, the people officiating it, people administering it aren't up to dealing with that complexity. The administration realise that they've got to make the game, as much as it's a complex game, enjoyable for the punter out there, for the spectator. So if there's a law that needs to be tampered with to encourage good attacking rugby that's, that's great for a spectator to watch, they're not afraid to do it. I think probably a bit more afraid than some would like them to be and, and it's not quite as quick, but they adjust from, from season to season. Rugby is constantly evolving, but sometimes too much. I think sometimes we're trying to fix things that don't need to be fixed, uh, and sometimes we don't fix the things that do need to be fixed. Now, the laws are a classic example. The game has changed a, a lot when we first, well, when I was first playing the, the game. I mean, simple things like the football itself, where we had a, a leather football that in wet conditions would be just like a, a heavy block, whereas now the footballs are all synthetic and they fly a thousand miles through the air. Uh, they're much easier to pass and, and handle and, and all of that. But it's not only that, the rules of the game have changed quite significantly. Rucking's been taken out of the game, which was a big part of our game when we were playing. You know, to go and rip the clothes off somebody and rip half their body to pieces with your tags was an accepted part of the game and nobody really, everybody just accepted the fact you're going to get rucked to death if you're in the wrong area. We went through a, a massive process to look at what was best for the game, you look at the product we were getting with the game, and all of a sudden there's more tinkering with it you know, to, to change what, what has been working. And to see the professionalism and negotiating enterprise bargaining agreements and trading off uh, player salary as opposed to player benefits and, and all of these sorts of things. When I was playing, most of the guys they were there purely doing it for the love of the game. I think a lot of players still do it for the love of the game, but money has a, a funny effect on, on people a, as well. After the 91 World Cup, we were celebrating with, um, with Forex and Forex were our sponsor and after we won in 99 in the professional era, um, we were drinking Grange, so the game had definitely uh, changed in the professional era. And people say, you know, would this team be good against that team? It, it doesn't hold water to compare them. Uh, the ability, the fact that these guys are fitter, stronger, faster, no doubt whatsoever. You, you'd be lucky to find a comparable player in a physical sense from 15 years ago to today or 20 years ago to today. Just, you, they have the opportunity to train. We, don't have the we didn't have that opportunity. In the amateur days, you also had a broader experience. You, know, you were working or studying. Um, you were doing a lot of uh, travelling. And, and so you had a really broad spectrum. I think now it's 100% you know, focused on rugby and you probably don't have that same um, experiences as, as what we had. You know, we always wonder about um, you know, whether the same ethos is in the rest of it and, and, and commitment to the game is there, but I think it is. I think there's an understanding that what's been done before you has been a, in a role to get you to this, this certain place. It's a different demogra demographic these days as well. I mean, I love watching these young players now playing for Australia. They've got guts, they've got determination, they've got commitment, they've got, they've got, the, they've got you know, everything that, that, that most of us didn't have in the 80s, where it was very conservative and you did what you were told. We didn't get our hands on the ball to actually have a run all that much back then, and I know front rowers never got their hands or never had a run of the ball, whereas today they get to participate and show, show the skills. 
Like a David Campisi in the 80s is all over the place now. You know, there's lots of David Campisi's playing for Australia now because they get the ball and their first reaction is, I'm going to have a go. And I love watching that and I love seeing that. But when it doesn't work, we need to be able to quickly regroup and quickly understand where it went wrong and get, forward and get going into the, into the next game and the next opportunity. I think the, the one on the amateur area, which was a big bonus, there was not the pressure and not the external pressures associated with, um, with people. I think with the way that the internet and technology is now, the pressure on people in their, not only on performance, but also uh, how they, they carry themselves, they're always under the spotlight. Loyalties aren't as strong as they previously were. Players will play for different sides because it is a profession now. To me, no bitterness amongst the old guys to see what, what's happening now. I think it's, it's a great thrill to, um, for, for having worn a jersey to see what the guys are doing now in, in terms of their representation. It's a, you know, it just brings a smile to them, um, a smile to the faces of the old guys especially because they're representing such a, an elite group. It takes so much to get there and to the, to the apex of rugby, but it gives you so much back um, right across your lifestyle. It's never a perfect game. You're always trying to make it better and, um, and there's a willingness to do that. We won't always agree on the way things are done, but that willingness is the key. I think rugby is camaraderie. I think that, um, and, it, and it can span generations. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. From your mates to your work, uh, to your kids, um, it's around education. To represent your country uh, in a sport at the international level, rugby is a life.